Good morning, Kitchissippi. It is Sunday, June the 16th, and this is a video version of the 395th Weekly Ward Kitchissippi Newsletter. Uh, remember, you can sign up at kitchissippiward.ca to receive the newsletter every week. I'll have a lot more links and information about some of the issues and topics we'll talk about in there. It's a very busy week at City Council. Uh, it's probably the one of the busier times of, of the term of council with a lot of big policy processes moving forward. Uh, it's actually a, a very busy time when you take a look at the cycles of terms of council. A lot of stuff coming out of the official plan that we uh, passed in the last term. Master plans, we'll get into some details down below. Uh, I am hosting pop-up office hours this week. Those are going to be on Tuesday, June the 18th from 1 until 4 p.m. I'll be at P uh, Princess Margaret Park this week. Uh, that is at 265 Fairmont. Um, I'll be there from 1 until 4 p.m. Pop-up office hours are a chance to come by anytime during those hours without appointment to chat with me one-on-one -on -one about whatever is on your mind. The Committee of Adjustment is going to meet on July the 3rd. There are a couple of applications here in Kitchissippi Ward. At 514 Churchill Avenue North, the owner is seeking to subdivide the property into two lots to create uh, one new lot for residential development. The existing triplex will remain on the other lot. And at 370 Princeton, the owner is seeking to subdivide the property into two lots for two three-story, eight-unit, low-rise apartments apartment buildings. Um, those are going to, uh, he's asking for reduced lot width, lot area and corner and interior side yard variances, as well as an increase in the number of dwelling units and building height. Uh, there are no staff comments uh, for either of these applications yet, but when those are available, I presume uh, for my next week's uh, newsletter, I'll make sure to make those available. We also have the decisions from the June 5th meeting of the Committee of Adjustment. Uh, remember there were the applications at 212 Carruthers and 1 171 Armstrong, both of those by CCOC, the committee granted both of those. Uh, an important open house, uh, or a couple of open houses coming up this week. The city is looking at how to connect the Dow's Lake LRT station, which I hope will be open by the end of the summer, with the new Ottawa Hospital. There are a couple of open houses. The first of those is virtual on June the 24th from 6 until 8.30 p.m. Uh, there's a registration link in the newsletter. There is also a uh, in-person uh, consultation session that's going to be held at Tom Brown Arena, that's at 141 uh, Bayview. Um, yeah, that one is in the evening. Uh, I've got details on that in the newsletter. The virtual session is going to offer a question and answer. The in-person session will be an open house uh, style format with staff available to answer questions as you look at the boards. Uh, I think this one is heating up as a topic. Um, I, I've had a, a, a preview of the bridge that they're proposing to build. Uh, I think there is more work that needs to be done on this and I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback. Uh, there is, uh, in March, Council directed staff to create a new website for problematic properties, both resources on how residents can navigate the bureaucracy with respect to those problematic, usually vacant properties, as well as a list of the problematic properties. The first part of that is now online. I've got a link in the newsletter to a list of resources that the city has put up to navigate the bureaucracy with respect to things like property standards or um, uh, criminal properties problems or trespass problems that you see at problem properties. More information is in the newsletter. They are still working on creating the list of problem properties across the city. The light rail is going to be shut down for uh, maintenance between Tunney's Pasture and Rideau from July 15th until July 28th. That's uh, after Blues Fest, thankfully. The uh, O-Train is going to run from Blair to University of Ottawa, but there will be R1 bus service that goes between Tunney's and Herdman. So July 15th to 28th, if you're coming from the West End, you'll be taking R1 service to get as far as Herdman Station, unless you want to get out at U of O where the train starts running to the east. The city has begun a consultation on its parks bylaw. Um, there is a link in the newsletter. They're taking a look at possibilities such as safety measures, uses, accessibility of public information, and amenities. Uh, for more information about the scope of that bylaw review uh, and the purpose of the initiative, I've got a link in the newsletter as we take a look at refreshing the parks bylaw. There's also a survey, Great Spaces, Great Places, where you can share your thoughts and ensure that everyone 
everyone has an opportunity to enjoy these spaces. The transportation master plan fourth phase of consultation is now underway. The city has dropped a couple of big documents, one that I've been waiting literally years for, which is the transportation trends, mostly informed by a new origin destination study of where people go in the city, where do they live, how are they traveling, how many trips are they making, how far do they go, is now online. Uh, so the big um, fourth phase of consultation is now underway. There's a survey that you can take online. Um, the the key here, I think, to remember is that the transportation master plan is really composed of two important parts. The first of them are the new policies that City Council has identified to support growth or the way we want to grow in the city. We've already passed that. That was in um, uh, the past couple of years. Now we're taking a look at the capital projects that need to be built in order to support growth. Those would be active and public transportation capital projects as well as roads, road wide. Um, all that um, uh, stuff is uh, being taken a look at as we get ready to pass our new transportation master plan. Um, that is, uh, there, I've got a link in the newsletter with a lot more information about uh, what that TMP is and how you can help shape it. Um, the Wellington West BIA continues its series of social Sundays. You can get social this summer in Hintonburg and Wellington Village on Sundays from 1 until 4 p.m. Each week, businesses in a different section of the Wellington West BIA have programming. I've got uh, a map and in more information in the newsletter uh, that has I will be putting out today. And I'm standing here in Lyons Park, where the Westboro Village BIA is undertaking a number of what they're calling Wellness in Westboro Get Fit and Give Back classes. So right here in uh, Lions Park, there's going to be um, fitness series every Saturday morning. It started last weekend through until August 31st. The local fitness boutiques are offering various different classes uh, for a minimum of $10 per class. You can get active, meet new friends, and support a great cause. I've got a lot more information again through a link in the newsletter. Uh, now for the busy part, at City Hall we have a lot of city council and committee meetings that are coming up. Uh, the first one of those is going to be the uh, Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee meeting. They're going to meet on June 17th where they're going to consult with or um, uh, consider the proposed new wildlife strategy. There are some elements of that that are uh, controversial. They are, for example, uh, proposing that they would continue to um, uh, capture and, uh, and euthanize some animals. Um, there is a, a new consultation structure that is is being proposed. Um, the full information is on the agenda of the committee meeting, which you can find in my newsletter, uh, but they are meeting on uh, tomorrow to talk about that at committee and vote on it. I'll be listening closely. I'm not on that committee, but uh, we were going to have to vote on that on June the 26th. The Emergency Preparedness and Protective Services Committee is going to meet on June 17th with a relatively workaday agenda. It includes receiving the reports, the annual reports from the Fire and Paramedic Services. The Environment and Climate Change Committee is going to be meeting on June the 18th. They're going to be considering the new Solid Waste Master Plan. I spoke a bit about this in the last video newsletter. The Solid Waste Master Plan will determine how we're going to handle solid waste as the city grows. Residents know I think by now that our trail road dump is going to uh, reach capacity somewhere around 2034, 2035. The solid waste master plan takes a look at how we can extend the life of the trail road landfill, how we're going to pay for extending the life of the trail road uh, landfill. However, it does put off one big decision, which is what we're going to do once the trail road facility is actually full. We'll expect to hear maybe next year whether council wants to build a new incinerator, build a new landfill, so lots more discussion on the very long term, but in the meantime, an important uh, phase of the Solid Waste Master Plan coming to Environment and Climate Change Committee this week. Then on June the 19th, the Planning and Housing Committee is going to meet. Uh, we've got the usual list of uh, rezonings and um, uh, development applications, including for the Canadian Tire Site that's uh, up at uh, Clyde and Churchill, or sorry, uh, Clyde and Carling. Uh, Councillor Troster is receiving 
receiving a response to her inquiry with respect to forgiving property tax for not-for-profit housing developers. Uh, basically, the answer is stay tuned. There's a report coming very soon that will go to our Finance and Corporate Services Committee. Uh, there is also, and I know this is going to be closely watched, uh, an update on the working group that is being formed between the federal government and the municipal government uh, to determine what is going to happen with development around the exper Central Experimental Farm. Uh, the 1081 car lane, um, I'm sorry, I forget the address, 986 baseline, I think, two big developments on the periphery of the farm, both of which have the uh, potential to impact some of the research that's done there. The municipality and the federal government need to work out what the ground rules are going to be for development around the farm moving forward in the context of our new official plan that contemplates some very significant development there. And then on June 20th, the uh, Environment and Climate Change Committee, along with the Planning and Housing Committee, are going to consider the Infrastructure Master Plan. This is probably one of the biggest, most costly documents that comes to City Council uh, once every two terms or so. It describes all the new pipes, um, basically the pipes, that we're going to need to build in order to support uh, growth in the city. There are new parcels of land that are being added to the urban boundary as part of the official plan. Taywin is one that comes to mind for a lot of people uh, and how we're going to service those with water, wastewater, stormwater is a big question. Uh, the development charges that will follow in order to pay for that infrastructure are always controversial. Uh, there is the new infrastructure master plan that is proposed and is coming to the joint committee on June the 20th. I will say uh, Chairman Ard and I recently had a good briefing with staff. Uh, Taywin is um, not how staff would have recommended expanding the urban boundary if you have to expand the urban boundary, but the um, infrastructure that needs to be built for that is going to be fairly gate-kept so that Taywin pays for Taywin. But all the details are in the documents which are available from a link to the agenda items that I've put online. Uh, that is it for the um, uh, newsletter this week. Uh, for those of you who celebrate, I, uh, I hope you're enjoying a great Father's Day. I'm at Lions Park here where I'm seeing lots of dads with their kids. I'm seeing lots of bike riding dads out there enjoying this absolutely spectacular weather. Uh, listen, Lucky Ron, um, I doubt you're watching, but you put in a killer set yesterday at the Hintonburg Community Association's annual arts park. Uh, it is uh, summertime, the living is easy. Get your sippy, have a great week, and thanks for watching.